Hey, good morning. It's Wednesday, June the 8th, and I'm in our garage. That's where the quail are at. And I just, uh, I thought of something. This was my normal morning to uh, clean them before the trash company comes by. He norm normally they come around 9.30, 10 o'clock-ish. It's going on almost 9 o'clock in the morning. It's humid in here. Already like dripping a little bit. But um, yeah, I was wondering where that dog went, <laughs> that German Shepherd Arkham. Uh, so I wanted to do just this uh, this real quick, uh, tell you what, what it takes to clean these birds. Okay, so I'm gonna switch uh, the, uh, the camera here and explain it real quick. Okay, so as you all know, I have the hatching time cages, at least for the time being. And uh, they probably 98, 99% I'm, uh, in my personal opinion, are unbelievable. They do the job. Uh, that's all I can say. I've heard other people say that the doors break and this and that occurs. Uh, I also feel, well, depends how you take care of them, perhaps. Maybe you lean too hard or whatever. They're made out of the ABS, uh, very durable plastic. Same thing they make boats and things out of. So. Anyway, that, that's two layers, you know, you can divide each layer into three separate cages for the quail. And this section here are the two layers are my jumbo quail. Uh, this is the brooder from Hatching Times. I will be probably connecting it uh, tomorrow as I've done an experiment and I've already had one of my own eggs hatch as of early this morning. So it's a jumbo quail. And so I'm, I'm going to do a brief video on that, but not right at the moment. But this will be lit up and moving and getting ready in the next 24 hours. So that's in between the two two sections here. Here is the uh, the other two sections, and I have the falby, and over here is the uh, pearl quail. And uh, what do you got? God, don't do that. Don't scare me. It looked like it was dead. No, it's just resting. <laughs> Doggone it. That scared me. Okay, so as you can see, each layer has this oil pan that I got at AutoZone. And that's the wide pan, oil pan. And they normally run, any, at least currently, you know, this is 2022. It's everything skyrocketing. Um, I paid, I think, $11 something with tax. It was 12 or 13 per pan. So I have four of these large pans. Hatching time gives you these uh, rubberized uh, plastic trays to put underneath their cages, and they work. But here is the dilemma. First of all, I want to tell you, I was looking at the clock right up there. It says it's almost 9 o'clock. And it was... Uh, 8:20 when uh, I started to clean these birds. I what I'm what blah, 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 I'm rambling here. It take it took me 23 minutes to clean all of that, and it smells great. There's no flies. Well, maybe one somewhere, but uh, uh, 23 minutes to clean all of these birds, and I've got I don't know how many close to 20 of them or whatever right now and, uh, and they're laying eggs and there's I, we got some vision that we're going to be doing with these and we're very excited um, but so with the hatching time layer cages and with what I've got right now with what you've seen here that all of this just took me 23 minutes this morning I used pine chips and uh, the, the pine chips smell phenomenally great um, I put enough on each tray so that when they poop and whatever it all is, it just uh, it soaks it up and um, you hardly even smell it. And I only do it twice a week. So what happens is that when I take the when I roll the tray out to dump it, I use we have two of these big uh, community type of uh, trash cans in our we live in a subdivision as I've shared before. We have, we're on a half an acre. And so I'd, I've created the dirt around my place into a garden. And when I see dirt, I see food. 
So, but I found that this size trash can is unbelievable. I can take one of those trays full of poop and I bring it over here, I open this lid, and as you can see, that's where it goes. And no spillage. I do have this shop vac, just, you know, because just putting the pine chips in here, I've got a couple, a bag and a half. They're fairly inexpensive to get these large sacks of pine chips. You can also use cedar, but if I was to utilize the quail poop, to fertilize, uh, I would want to have the pine and not the cedar, you know, but I don't have that means at the moment to do that because we're on a, on a slope. And so to compost this is not the easiest thing for me to do, at least at, the, at this time being. Okay, so 23 minutes, that's all it took. The last thing I want to share here is this no trespassing sign. You're, you're, you're saying, Wayne, what, what, what's with that? Well, that's not plastic, people. That is metal, aluminum, I guess. Sheet, aluminum sheet. Actually, oh, I got a couple there. I, didn't, I thought I only had one. Hey, Arkham, Arkham. Oh, God, he's right here at my side. <laughs> I'm losing it. Okay, so see what I've done? I've zip tied. These things come with, with pre, you know, holes, pre, all I have to do is punch it out. Look at that. And guess what? A zip tie goes through that real easily. And look at this. It almost fits perfectly on the sides of these hatching time cages. One of the biggest issues that I've had in the last several weeks owning these hatching time cages has been primarily the poop flinging out at, at the ends on the sides of each of the cage and at the back of the cage. What I've done is, I wonder if I could show you, I'm just gonna take a chance that this is showing. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, I've lined all the backs of their cages and this wall was plastered with poop, this drywall. I was fortunately able to get most of it cleaned up but right now, these incredible $1.24 at Walmart, that's where I got them, um, in their uh, house for sale signs, wherever that's at in your local Walmart. A dollar, $1.24, that's what they were. And so I just zip tied one, and you can see how I did it. I just, on each side, and then you go down. And, and I just had to use my imagination how, how I can bring it in. So this is, this is pretty, pretty solid here, okay? And uh, it stayed, the, what I had as an issue here on these trays, this tray right here, I had to put a piece of paper it, every single time I cleaned the cage because the poop would fall out and it would fall and land on the edge and then fall over onto the table. And, th and then it got stinky and messy. So what I've been able to accomplish, like this is interesting because Hatching Times puts a side on their brooder and they, in the back here, uh, well, I can't open it because I got, oh well, yeah, I can. See, they got the, the solid plastic for the back also. So the three weeks that I have the baby quail in the brooder here until they're ready to go out to their grow out cages, uh, their poop and feathers and mess and everything all stays inside and it's fairly easy to clean on this brooder. So my question hatching times if you're watching this video is couldn't you make a flap Maybe, uh, you know how you do the sections in uh, the divider sections in these so the quail can have a lot of freedom to go from one section to the other. Couldn't you create something similar to that where it could snap on the sides? And I don't have hardly any spillage, any poop. I mean, this used to be Poopsville, where you're looking here. 
poop would come out of each section and just fall out and it's, it was just a mess every single week. Also what I like about the oil pans is that they, they're long enough so they'll cover the feeder trough here. So ending here, uh, I got cut off somehow. Maybe maybe I touched the button here on, on my camera, but um, I was showing you the, the, the chicken wire where the, uh, the plastic where they, they walk on and the, how the eggs roll out and my frustration because the eggs would get caught in between the way the, the width is on, on where the quail walk on and stuff so the eggs just don't roll out and uh, sometimes I seriously sometimes the poop is big enough that it actually will roll in between that and um, then it falls out and goes into the oil pan so anyway so those uh, tin uh, for sale signs no trespassing signs have just been a godsend and uh, I am very happy very pleased uh, again with the hatching time I'm not complaining against the hatching time at all I just uh, quell or quell and they're messy and uh, and if you don't keep them clean they will stink to high heaven seriously uh, when I open this uh, when I open that uh, it reeks especially because I'm cleaning them during the week and then I dump it in there and then I open it and boy the the aroma is unbelievable. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, so that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this and possibly got some ideas if you do have hatching time cages. But what if you don't have a hatching time cage? What if you have a regular rabbit cage or uh, some type of a bird cage or whatever and you have quail and you know you, you need something to keep them safe and keep and you want to be able to keep them clean you want to eliminate the flies you, you want to eliminate the stench and all of that this is what I found uh, that keeps a clean garage uh, a nice smelling garage if you you know if, if I'm just being blunt here <laughs> and uh, it's a breeze to clean these quail and so it's fairly economical and uh, I don't know what else to say except thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the uh, this video here, and hopefully you'll continue to watch, subscribe if you haven't. Um, again, it's uh, Quailin at Fruits and Berries at Tennessee and Homestead. Uh, I'm seriously both item. My wife and I are thinking about modifying the name of our homestead here, only because we may be going into production, uh, and, and we already have. A store wanting to purchase in the near future our quail eggs and also possibly meat and we have some other connections in the Asian community and so I am very thrilled with that but I, I'm thinking of dwarfing down the name a possibility and I'll let everyone know I'm just thinking of making it brief and to the point fruits and berries homestead but that's going to include the quail also <laughs> Because we have a small little apple orchard here that we're, we're doing. Uh, we're going to be planting a vineyard here with muscadine grapes. And between our berries and, and our grapes and uh, everything else that's going here and, and our garden beds that I've done this year, we're expanding on a very, very small homestead. But uh, trying to be as self-sufficient as possible and eliminating going to the grocery store as much as possible. So I'm going to share a lot of things. I got a steamer canner that I've ordered that's coming. Uh, I want to order a wine press. And I'll go into why. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've got a Vitamix and just setting the structure, the foundation. So whatever hits the fan in the future, if, if the fan ever gets hit, because hopefully it won't okay let me just say it that way still believing for a positive outcome for righteousness for this nation and um, not going to get into politics here but um, that's where I'm at and uh, there's hope 
And I will say this, there is no other hope for this world except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our hope and the glory. And because of him, you can have life. I have life. The Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, if you're a believer. And I am a believer. I'm a, I'm a born again, spirit filled Christian believer. And so I do have hope, irregardless of what is happening here in the United States. So anyway, thanks again for watching Fruits and Berries Homestead. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, and I'll bring it up again shortly. Take care and God bless. Okay.